So I've had a set of Shinko's E804 and E805 Adventure tyres fitted to my CRF250 Rally for over a year now, and roughly 6,000 UK or so. I guess it's about time I gave an update on how they're going on. <laughs> So, why did I choose them in the first place? Prior to mounting the Shinkos, I was using a set of Avon Trail Rider tyres on the rally. Despite the name, these are more of a road tyre than a trail suitable tyre. And with COVID putting pay to my regular highway rides up to Auckland, the rally was getting used more as a toy rather than a commuter. So, I opted to switch them out for the Shinkos as I needed a 50-50 tyre to balance out the long stretches of tar between the fun gravel roads and the trails of New Zealand. Being tight on funds, the Shinkos look to offer the best bang for your buck on the market. So, 13 months later, what do I think? In the 13 months since I've had them fitted, the E804 and E805 have seen me through the 42 Traverse, some big road touring kilometres including a nearly 700km day riding from Cambridge to Upper Hutt the long way, all the way through the Molesworth and Rainbow Stations in the South Island and heaps of gravel up here in the north. With a price tag of $130 for the rear in 120-90-18 size and $92 for the 90-90-21, I've been able to see an incredible amount of the country for what is a very small investment in tyres. When it comes to riding on the big stretches of road before things get adventurous, the Shinkos have done well. They're quiet and roll along comfortably without causing any stress on the rider's senses. Yet they've got plenty of grip to have some real fun when the road gets twisty. Even when damp, they haven't caused any slides or unwanted skids from the rally. Though I have to admit, my main riding on the bike has been limited to mostly sunny days. I don't go out looking to ride in the rain, but when I've been caught out, they've been as composed in the wet as they have been in the dry. Keep in mind, I do try to keep to the conditions, and I don't go pushing them hard when in the wet on public roads. I do have a family at home to come back to. Being a 50-50 tyre, the off-road performance of the Shinkos is just as important as the on-road. And once again, they haven't disappointed. Keep in mind, I'm not trail riding this bike with these tyres, and most of the off-road conditions I find myself in have been gravel and dirt roads. That said, I've also squeezed a bit of sand and some mud and clay riding with them, and they performed as expected. A decent amount of grip to my ability and the speed off-road that I'm doing, and they haven't got me into any grief. So, how are they wearing at 6,000 kilometres? For the money, I am already pretty happy with the wear on the Shinkos. They've already well outlasted the factory IRC rubber by a thousand kilometres and the rear still has three mil remaining on the centre. And there is plenty of life left on the front too. As you'd expect, the rear wears faster than the front and I've not particularly helped this with my off-tar riding style, which involves a lot of spinning of the rear wheel whenever I can. I reckon I've got another 1500k or so left on the rear, which would put the tyre life out to about 7500 ks If I treated the rear nicely, I'm sure I'd get even more than that. At this stage, it looks like I'll be getting another E805 to slap on the rear, and run both that and the current E804 until both are in need of replacing. Then I'll look and see what my immediate riding needs are, and go from there. What's been great about them? First off, I am pretty happy with how they've been wearing. Over 6,000 kilometres of use on the rear is great considering how versatile they are. They look pretty cool too with their big block tread design, and even while the rear is starting to show signs of squaring off, it transfers from side to side with no issues at all still. Possibly more importantly, they've been reliable in both the amount of grip I can expect from them with the mighty 250 chugging away, but also the sense that I've had no punches and no damage on these tyres themselves despite the varied conditions I've ridden on. What's been not so great? Honestly, I have very few complaints about the E804 and E805. I've had the occasional butt puckering moment where the front has felt like it was going to wash out mid-corner, but I'd expect this from almost any tyre considering the conditions and speeds I've had this happen. Uh, the fact that it has never let me down and the bike has always remained upright is a testament to how controllable these tyres are. The times the bike has fallen over has generally been at a very low speed and due to rider incompetence rather than the tyres. Uh, it's the same at the back end with the E805. While lateral grip can be lacking thanks to the tread design, the low power of the rally really means this is a problem at all. Yes, they're a compromised tyre with a near 50-50 split personality between road and dirt ability, 
but on a bike like the 250 Rally, so long as I've had air in them, it's been a case of set and forget. They've just been really easy to live with. Rest assured, I am stoked for the bang for buck I've gotten out of these tyres. While they're not perfect, they balance the needs of road and off-road nicely for the typical gravel-based adventure riding found in New Zealand. And with good tyre life and predictable handling, at least on the low-power CRF 250 Rally, they are incredible value for money. Uh, if you want to know more about these tyres or you want to grab a set for yourself, check them out at where I got mine from at bitsforbikes.co.nz. Uh, if you like this video, give us a like and a subscribe. Stay tuned for more CRF 250 Rally content and uh, hopefully a bit more other content based on other stuff as well. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.